Over the years, I've drawn and painted a lot of trees. Some of these examples you may have seen before, some you may have not. Some of them are in oil, like this one and the one you previously saw. And some are just watercolors in my sketchbook or they're in gouache, quick studies. This one I did during my 30, 60, 90 day sketchbook challenge. It was based off of a painting done by Emile Friant that uh, was in the book that I had. Um, this being the most recent quick studies in my sketchbook based off of some field studies I had done. And then these are also some um, images that were based off of field studies that I've done. But one thing you will notice when you observe my trees that they are not long flowing lines. They're often segmented. They have a direction and then they shift. They're angular and that goes all the way down to the individual branches. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some of my secrets on how I draw trees, tips and tricks, and I'm going to give you some examples of why I use this method. So what I thought I would do today is share with you um, a couple of pictures I went out in the field and took. I thought that would be the best proof for you to actually see. And I took it and um, I'm putting it on my iPad so we can draw over it. Um, and looking at this tree, what do you think you would have seen right off? Now, I'll tell you, this is a pine tree. This is a longleaf pine tree, which is one of our native uh, trees here in Florida. And um, often what people will do is, or what they will see is they see, let me up this a little bit. They see a central trunk like this, and they see all these variations of these lines going off. I, I find that this is something the way a lot of people draw trees. One of the first things that you do when you're drawing is observe. Whether you wanna make something look realistic or not is completely up to you. It's not like if you're doing a graphic tree, if you're doing something more illustrative, you can't draw a tree like this. Obviously you can, you can draw a tree any way you like. But when I'm trying to draw a tree and I want it to kind of represent the soul of the tree, I like to, um, let me undo my work here. I actually like to look at the tree in detail and observe how it's actually constructed. The actual, I feel like it's the bones of the tree. It's the, maybe the soul of the tree. And what I will tell you what I see right off the bat is I don't see a straight line. I see a variation of segments and then it shifts. And then there's an intersection and a shift, an intersection and a shift and another little shift, another shift. Oops. Going up that tree. Another shift, a shift, and a shift. And then the branches are also that way. Coming off from the base. Remember branches off often. The standard is that a tree at the bottom, at the very base, it's the thickest point. It slowly begins to taper off or remain somewhat the same, somewhat consistent as it goes up and breaking off to all the branches. It's thicker at the base. The branches are thicker at the base closest to the tree. And, um, and I'm not really representing that right now. I'm just trying to show to you the shifts. Here's a shift. Let's make that a little thinner and a shift, shift. There's car noises outside if you're hearing things. And even though it's a biological I, um, 
thing. It's a living thing. I know we often think that things are curvy. You, maybe you see this as a curve, but it's technically not. They're just segments and lines. Segments and vertices showing gradual, gentle shifts. And I'm not technically sure why these shifts occur. I'm not a, a botanist or anything. Um, I'm assuming that uh, obviously the environment and the sun, the tree recorrecting itself, trying to get optimal light, getting out from underneath uh, other branches or trees or any obstacles, um, keeping it from reaching uh, the ability to catch capture the light. So that's what I'm seeing. And I think that this photograph proves to you that this is true. So now let's turn off our base layer and I already kind of see the structure of the tree. Now, whether or not I'm got you convinced just yet um, is another thing. But I will tell you that even in, um, even in when drawing human beings, I often still work in segments. There's something about segmented drawing and vertices and subtle shifts, and then you soften that from there that creates more of a lifelike look of a natural form. Another thing I do when I'm drying trees really quickly, this is my second tip, is that I often like to focus on creating an envelope for what I'm seeing. Even though you may think, because there's places where the trees, branches have a lot of leaves or a lot of needles, places where it's more dense, where it's light and dark, you may not realize that there's a structure there. But especially when I'm out in the field, I want to know what the structure is as much as possible so that if I don't have all the time in the world to capture the actual structure of the tree itself, I can capture um, the envelope, the, the general gist of the structure of the tree that I'm observing. So in doing that, let's see, let's pick a different color. Let's go for the green for our envelope. Now, there is no one way to do this. We can just cut across, making this a little larger so you can see it. There's no right or wrong. You just want to get down that general structure of all the clusters of the branches and the leaves. Basically creating an envelope of what exists in nature how it's constructed, the positive and the negative space. And I'm gonna get this also this little clump down here. And that kind of tells me the structure of my what I'm looking at, what I'm trying to represent. And you can see by just turning this off, now we've got something that looks a lot more like what we're trying to observe. The next step in this, let's see, let me turn back on, is adding in some of those leaves. Of course, we're doing this in a lot more detail, doing it quicker when we're actually, um, actually more fully representing things, um, the most important things, the first, and then, and then depending on how much time you have. So the next thing I will do is, um, and I probably would in the field, I would be doing more of the structure. Also realizing that as branches get smaller, they appear lighter because of atmosphere. Um, your eye is perceiving more of the lighter blue behind it, so it looks lighter. And so when I'm drawing and painting, I try to be observant of that as well. Um, but then, um, let me just go ahead and put in a few 
few more of these quick segments. Obviously not everything you're seeing. Some things you are. Just trying to represent the world that you live in. Paying an homage to this living thing that you share the planet with. I think in general that's good. Actually, I put that on the wrong side, but okay, never mind. Um, and and then you want to represent some of the clusters that you're seeing. Just my pen a little bit. I'm no, I'm no procreate expert. I'm just. I thought it would be a great way to share with you the general way that I do things. And you don't have to be overly detailed, but you see, you can't really see. And I mean, of course, obviously this is just a photograph. So a lot of details are not go are going to be admitted. And if I was doing, um, something with color with watercolor or in oils or something i would rep i would throw in a bunch of color for some of these larger areas where i'm seeing more paint i mean where where i'm seeing more less opaque areas where i'm not seeing much Let me go back to this other layer really quick. And I'm gonna put in a couple of segments, quick segments for so obviously we're not really drawing a tree here, we're just just trying to show show you how it's segmented. This tree almost looks more vertical. There's a subtle shift from here. There's somewhere up in here. A couple little shifts here. This thing really turns right here. And then a shift there. So I've got like a general bones of what my tree looks like. So in turning off my layer, now you can see it looks a lot like what we're trying to go for. Now, of course, I'm not gonna be using these colors and I'm not probably gonna be doing it on Procreate. I could, but, um, and if I was, I'd be taking a lot more time and more care. Um, but you can see how the segment represents nature better. It represents what you're seeing better. It's more of an accurate representation of a tree. <laughs> and um, so, and let me show you another example. I've got this oak tree. This is a live oak. You'll see how this whole tree is completely shifted off. It's not even up and down. It's not an up and down. How would you represent that tree? And I would guess also in looking at this tree, you might think it's a whole lot of squiggly lines. You might think maybe, it's going back to our pink really quick. You might think, oh, this is like, like this. Like that 
might be how how you think that tree should be represented that it's a bunch of squiggly lines curvy lines even this this really does look very curvy but when you draw it and then let's turn off that base layer it doesn't look very tree like it just looks like not a good structure it doesn't look stable so turning back on my photograph let me clear this off let's start again all right using the principle that we talked about before about segments This tree is off kilter from the get go. Who knows why? Maybe when it first started growing, it was surrounded by more trees. It was struggling for light. It caused a shift. Um, they often do shift different ways, just like this one here, trying to get out from underneath that larger tree to get to the light, giving itself a chance. Um, but you will notice that in looking at the tree that really subtle shifts of lines is what is going to represent this tree best. Segment, segment. There's going to be places where you can't see and on these trees multiple trunks come out multiple multiple large trunks often come out and then up in here segment shifts now if this is because it's slightly adjusting for light getting out from underneath its branches its own branches branches of another tree I'm not sure what causes this, but clearly it's trying to take advantage. And I think that this makes for a better looking attempt at a tree when you start realizing the constructions a lot different than a bunch of squiggly lines. This, I'm not even sure about what's going on there. Some of it you have to guess at. It's true. All right, now, let me do a couple up here too. I'm gonna do a few representations of this up here. It's not complete but let's take off uh, take off the background and I think that looks more tree like it looks more like what we were looking at than previously so I think that's kind of the proof and then again showing you the method that I was using before where um, I create an envelope Using all, all the tools of observation um, when you're drawing. Here would be my envelope. Just mapping this out. This is especially helpful when you're just trying to get a tree down really quick. Maybe, you're, whoops. Maybe you are trying to get this thing to shift. You're in the car and you just want to you just find a tree gorgeous and you just want to kind of capture it quickly. You take a quick photo and maybe you want to just do a quick sketch. So 
So that's generally, and we can probably like fake because these trees are together. We'll fake that out. These are actually a couple little small trees that are coming off here. A few things going on here, but that's the general structure. Your negative and your positive spaces create a general structure of what you're trying to represent. So let's turn that off as well. And look, look how much closer we are now to an actual tree. Still, it's the bare bones, but you have something that looks more lifelike. You may not realize that right now, but you do. Um, and it doesn't really come together to where eventually you don't keep you don't keep the structure where well, you can keep the structure. It's not that I haven't of your um, of your envelope. It just kind of helps you create a place marker for your leaves because you don't have time to do a lot of leaves um, sometimes. Let's see. Let's choose. So if I was going to do the leaves, now that I know where they kind of belong, um, that's when I start just doing all my little scratches, you know, like, because you don't really know the general direction. You're just trying to represent kind of what you're seeing. You want to do it really quickly. Some things slightly go beyond the boundary that you make. Some things go in a little bit if you didn't capture it just quite right. And this is when you start getting into the details. The details, you know, of all the places, all the subtle changes. Um, you're not going to capture every single, every single, unless you've got the time to uh, capture every little hole that's being created. I usually don't have the time for that. I just do stuff quickly. And I use utilize these tools of the segments and the envelope to give me a starting point. And I capture what the most important parts of this tree are, what, what I'm trying to really represent. You know, like obviously when it comes down to these branches, there's I'm gonna want to know where some of these collections of um, leaves are coming from. But you get to ch pick and choose what it is you're trying to to really justify and show. like drawing in general you can always get the lost in the weeds of things even when you're just trying to do a quick demonstration of a concept I have a lot of traffic going on outside for some reason today tonight Remember I was telling you that this kind of looked like it was more of a squiggly line, but and representing it more segmented, which in reality, when you start really looking at it, it actually is. Now, of course, we still did this quickly. How much more does that look like a tree that we were drawing? I'm not sure if you're going to agree based off just this evidence here, because these are such quick gestures. 
of um, my concept, quick representation of my concept. Um, and I can do a, a longer drawing. Um, let's see. The other thing that I wanted to show you was that um, I feel that a lot of people, what I've seen um, when looking at other people trying to draw trees, they often, let me pick a different color, pick more of a red. They often will do, um, show people that you need to do these big bulbs, these big round bulbs. This is the concept that I did not agree with when drawing trees. I understand why, but I don't think it's helpful. I think it, it you know, at the end of the day, your tree is just going to look comical. I understand conceptually, you do want to think about this is a collection of where maybe, but it, it's not always true. You don't really know what's really coming forward, what's going back. It's kind of hard to always discern what's really going on. But conceptually, they want you to realize that it is kind of a collection and there's a part of it where the light and the shade will be hitting the collections of, of branches and leaves. And, um, and that's supposed to help you with your form. But I find this confusing. I find this that you're gonna end up looking like something that looks more like a cartoon character um, and it's gonna be a lot more work where I feel like the method that we were using um, with these other structures, you're closer to something that looks like a real tree. So that's why, and, and quicker I feel, but that's just my thoughts on that. So you can tell me what you think about this and um, and I hope that that is a helpful thought. It's certainly something I feel like you should at least give it a try. Go out and observe some of your own trees and see if you're not noticing some of these shift, shifted segments and vertices um, in everything, whether it be a rose, um, a bush, um, even a leaf is more, more angular than you think often. But all of life is structured more like this, even when you don't think it's true. The idea of those conceptual circles don't um, really work for me because this is not the way I draw anything, not a human face, not an apple, not anything. Um, I mean, maybe an apple. I mean, obviously structurally, yes. I might, but even still, even with an apple, I often still will start thinking about conceptually where my, my negative and my um, positive spaces are. And then I start thinking about values and stuff. And then you start rounding things off. Like I just feel like this concept of going from segments and then softening, softening those curves um, work so much better. So let's just go back to the construction. And I think you can see when you look at my trees, you'll see the same concept in play. You'll see all these segmented structures, angular, subtle shifts in the angles of the the line work. Thinking about how thick those branches are towards the tree. And then lightening and thinning out. But still, all these subtle angles. Angles, angles, breaks, angles, vertice, vertice, subtle shifts. And then, so this was actually a pine tree that I represented here. And um, so you can see all I did I didn't represent every single, every single pine needle on this tree, but I utilized um, some color, some watercolor, um, just kind of sketch some in. And then I used my pencils and just kind of went over it to emphasize. See, like these are a cluster, but I only really did a little bit of detail here and there. Um, even in my background trees, you see I could kind of even more use the envelope kind of a process to represent the line of the trees. There's very little details of leaves here. 
very, very little. So that's all I'm gonna share this week. I hope that you gleaned something from today's video and I hope you have a gorgeous, beautiful, blessed week ahead. All right, guys, thank you. See you next week. Bye.